We are so thankful that you have tuned in for Hope today, and that is just what this program is all about. We're going to dig into revival. Do you want revival in your own life? Do you want to see revival in the people around you? Then this is the program for you. You might want to call someone and get them excited about what God is about to do. This is our host, Tom Hollis and Amanda Brocker. I was going to say co-host, but I feel like I'm your co-host. Oh, no, we're both hosts. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Uh, Jennifer Misko is going to be with us. If you're watching this right now, it's not by accident. Here on Hope Today, we're going to talk about revival, as Amanda just said. Uh, revival for you. Jennifer Miskov will be with us uh, to let you know that you are chosen by God to be set apart and consumed by the fire of his love as a warrior in the remnant army of Jesus lovers that he's raising up right now. I know I want to be in that remnant. I want to be part of that army and I know that you do too. It's going to be a power. This is not going to be just like a TV show here. There's going to be a powerful an impactful thing that is gonna happen when we talk to Jen. Amen, part of that powerful thing is we're gonna learn how to shape the world and impact future generations. We're gonna discover the secrets to sustain revival and we're gonna find out how to step into the fullness of our God-given destiny. Man, this is the program to watch. <laughs> Please call your neighbor, text someone and tell them to tune in. I'm excited for what God has for us today. I believe that we're going to experience the presence of God on this Hope Today program. Well, yeah, and what we'll be talking about our book, Sustain the Flame, which uh, I highly recommend to anyone uh, because, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not about just learning some things. It's about experiencing God. Uh, that's, that's, right. that's what's so important. Well, mm -hmm. do you long to live in continual power and continual passion for Jesus, but you feel yourself being pulled away by distractions? and by responsibilities and all these things we have to do. Well, those distractions can hinder us from achieving all that God has in store for us. International minister and revivalist, Dr. Jennifer Miskov, ignites a fire to pursue Jesus with total abandonment, revealing how to keep the passion and fervor for God burning in your life in a sustained way. Her newest book is called Sustain the Flame, Secrets to Living Saturated. Love that word, mm -hmm. saturated in God's presence and holy fire. Jennifer, it's great to have you back with us on Hope Today. Oh, I love being with you guys because every time I'm with you, I just feel God crashes in in a special way. So I'm, I'm excited and full of anticipation for what he wants to do. Well, there's nothing better than we could do than have God crash into our little interview here, right? <laughs> That's what we want. Um, you know, I want to ask you about burning, you know, the sustaining the flame is your book. And, and um, you know, the, uh, my family has this little cabin that my grandfather built uh, about 100 miles north of here. The only way to get any heat is to build a fire. But I noticed something. If you don't continually feed the fire, like if you go to bed at night, you wake up with icicles on your, on your eyelids, you know, because you've got to continue to feed that fire for it to stay burning. What does that speak to you spiritually? How, how do you use that term fire to denote that relationship with God that we all want to have? Yeah, well, it talks about how God is a consuming fire. I think that's in Hebrews 12. And really the fire is just God's presence. It's living fully alive, fully um, born for what we're called to. And that's just being in love with Jesus, having a heart ignited on fire for Jesus. And the only way to keep the fire burning, you're right, you got to throw some logs on. You got to make sure if it's a lamp, you stay full of the oil, the oil of intimacy with Jesus, the oil of intimacy uh, with the Holy Spirit. Uh, my heart and passion is that we wouldn't just have these radical encounters with the Lord. We wouldn't have these seasons of revival. We wouldn't burn and then burn out. We would be ones that burn and have a sustaining burn. So when I'm 60, when I'm 80, when I'm 100, I'm, I'm more in love with Jesus and more passionate for him than ever before. I think that's uh, really the heart behind the book. Yeah, you know, one of the things you talk about uh, is um, you mentioned that you're a surfer, and I found the, the illustration very, I, I loved it, where you say the worst thing you can hear as a surfer is if you're at a, at a, a certain area and you're, and you're waiting for the waves and someone tells you, well, the waves were great yesterday. Could you just speak to that? What's that mean spiritually to you? Because I, I just love the application. Yeah, I believe we're in a Kairos moment, and Kairos is a Greek word in the New Testament for time, but it's like 
a special time, like you're a window of opportunity. You're born for such a time as this. And surfing has taught me so much about flowing with the Holy Spirit, paddling hard, positioning for the wave. And I feel it's very uh, significant and similar to riding the wave of the Holy Spirit, riding the wave of revival that's really already upon us. And what does it look like to be ready to not just be in position, but to ride this epic, massive tsunami wave of revival that's already begun in our generation and not get taken out by it. And I, I've, I've learned so much personally by studying the waves and riding waves for, what, 30 years now. And it's so similar to tapping into the hidden currents of the Holy Spirit and making sure we're in position to move where the Spirit's moving, to flow. And there's swells that come. You got to be out there. You don't want to miss it. And so I don't want to miss any move of God. I want to be right at the heart of it when it comes. Well, let me ask you about that, because, you know, I think a, a lot of us may think, well, revival, it happens, it's great, and then it's gone. Um, and revivals historically have been like that. But how can we sustain the flame? How can, what are the principles that matter for us to ride this wave continually? Yeah, great question. First of all, revival, um, I don't, you know, revival is when someone's dead, they need to be revived and awakened. Revival is just the first part. It's just the first step. After someone's been dead to Christ and needs to be reawakened in their first love and passion for Jesus, they don't need to be keep being revived. They need to actually get up and start becoming the gift of God they're called to be, to bring reformation, to bring transformation, to do the works God's prepared beforehand for them to walk into. And it's like cultivating a sustaining burning in our life for Jesus so that the fire never goes out. The only reason revival exists and we need it is when that fire goes out. So if we can cultivate ways um, in our lives, I call them pathways to intimacy, like rhythms in our life that can sustain that fire so it doesn't go out. We won't even need revival. We could just be agents of revival wherever we go. And I have a whole chapter, you know, in the book where I talk about practical things. Fasting is one practical way to keep the fire burning. Staying full of the oil, Matthew 25. Spending time with Jesus, spending time in community. Um, there's so many different practical ways, but what does it look like for us to stay in, in communion with the Lord? Because if we're in communion with the Lord, if we remain burning ones, we won't need revival for ourselves, but we'll, everywhere we go, we'll see revival ignited, which is what I want to be and what I want to inspire other people to be always on fire, because I think that's possible. Mm -hmm. Well, let me ask you about that. And maybe this would be a good place for you to define revival as over against, say, a renewal, which is obviously a wonderful thing as well. How do you, how do you divide, divide those two? You know, I, I, there's so many different definitions. I attempt in the book to define revival, as, as you read, Tom. Um, but really, revival is just being more in love with Jesus. It's just having uh, that fire that used to be there. It's for Christians um, to be reawakened to first love. That's it. It's being in love with Jesus. Many times as a result of revival happening in individual, it'll happen in communities and families and regions, and it will release transformation in the world as well. Many people will be saved. Salvations will come. Renewal is similar in a sense where um, people are getting refreshed. They're getting reignited. Um, I don't know if it, I, I, I tend to see renewal kind of staying within the streams of the church more so than flowing beyond the church. Revival at the essence starts with the believers, but generally kind of goes more expansive to bring transformation outside of the church. Um, but ultimately, you know, revival is all about Jesus. It's um, we're, we're seeking the reviver not like revival has become an idol to some people. They put revival above Jesus. And we have to be a people like uh, Moses in Exodus 33, where we, we don't want to go anywhere, even into our destiny, even into revival. If God's presence isn't there, we want to be a people so marked and saturated with the presence of the Lord that we're going to move where he's moving and we're going to slow down. You know, we're going to, we're going to wait when he's waiting. Mm -hmm. But of course, revival runs in my, in my veins. I love it. I love revival history. I love seeing God move. Um, but we have to always make sure it's about Jesus. 
and we don't put the, the gifts and the signs and the wonders above the one that is the reviver. And I think that, I think it's best when they're both married together and then you just see God move in a special way. But it's really about intimacy with the Lord because all fruitfulness, all revival, all moves have got to come from a place of just being in love with Jesus. That has to remain the one thing, the source of it all. Amen. So good. I'm just thinking about like the application because here the church, you know, we are revived, so to speak. We're not dead. We're spiritually alive. However, I feel like sometimes the spiritual hunger gets lost. What would you say are some really good applications that we as God's children can, you know, implement into our lives to keep that hunger? Oh, I love that question, Amanda. I think that's what, what I was on the show last time for. I, I Fasting, you want to grow your hunger for God, learn how to fast. If you want to run fast and go, go far, um, embrace not just uh, a one-time fast, but embrace a lifestyle of fasting because it's really feasting upon the Lord. Fasting simply saying no to food so we can grow in our spiritual hunger for God. And I think that if you want to talk about growing hunger, and I and I mentioned in the book how hunger is one of the keys and catalysts to almost every move of God. It was hunger that caused them to pray. It was hunger that caused them to lean in. It was hunger that was really powerful um, in, in the domino effect of revival coming. And if there's a practical way we can grow our hunger, then I want to embrace that. And it, there is, it's fasting, but it's doing it not with a religious mindset. It's doing it to feast upon the Lord, to worship him, to minister him. It's doing it not for him to do certain things for us. It's just doing it to be in more, in more in love with him. So that's one way I think powerful that you can grow your hunger for the Lord. Jen, I have to ask you, uh, and I, I want everybody to really kind of, uh, hopefully they're paying attention the whole time, but really pay attention to this because you spent a lot of the book talking about the Moravians and what they meant to the body of Christ. Now, I know they influenced John Wesley, who was the founder of Methodism. Amanda and I were just sharing before the program, my great, great, great grandfather was a Methodist preacher in England. Your grand great grandfather, great Charles grandfather, Rayleigh, was a Methodist yes. preacher. He traveled in a wagon by horse. So, so in some <laughs> cases, we are children of the Moravians sitting here right now today, mm -hmm. and I just get chills thinking about that. Can you tell us about the Moravians and what, what, how they impacted the body of Christ? That is a, so cool that you guys are fruit of. Literally, there's just one refugee named Christian David fleeing the persecution in his country at that time was Moravian. It's present day Czech, um, Czech Republic. And thankfully, this rich, wealthy nobleman named uh, Zinzendorf opened up his land in Hernhut, Germany for him to build a home. And Christian David kept going back and getting all these refugees. And they built this community. And Zinzendorf really had a heart for it to be unity, you know, seeking the Lord in unity. And at one point um, in the, I think it was 1700s. Uh, I don't know the dates, but you know, the dates are in the book. Um, they realized there was not unity. And so they said, we're going to, you know, we're going to come together at this church in Berthel, Berthelsdorf in and we're going to put aside our differences and seek the Lord and choose to be unified. And when they did that, it's called the Moravian Pentecost. The fire of God fell when they were seeking unity. Mm. Just God just crashed in. And from that place, they're like, we got the fire. We got the revival fire, but how are we going to steward it? And just a few weeks later, you know, a handful of people said, we're going to pray every hour on the day so that we can steward this fire. And so they, they steward the fire in prayer and intercession. So that prayer meeting lasted over 100 years, the 24-7 wow. prayer movement. Protestant, you know, and Christianity has roots wow. in Let this. Me interrupt and from you that, I need to interrupt you because yeah. I don't want people to miss this. That prayer meeting lasted for 100 years. <laughs> is that what you said? Is that what, I mean, is it, is it, I mean, most of our prayer meetings, we're glad when they're over after an hour is done or something. You know, this is 100 years of sustained prayer. Incredible. And it wasn't like they would all stop and go to church and pray. They would actually have um, 
time allocated throughout their day where they would be doing their normal job, but they would be praying during that hour. So the 24 hours of the day were all slotted for different people to pray. And they covered that for 100 years, which is incredible. And from this place of, of unity and the fire of God coming and then prayer and intercession, the fire of intercession, then they felt led of the spirit to send missionaries out. For, first, they sent them to slaves on, I think it was St. Thomas Island, where some Moravians sold themselves into slavery so they could reach the slaves for Jesus. Wow. And eventually, you guys know the story, um, some Moravians were on a ship to America. Praise the Lord, because I'm fruit from that as well. And in the storm, what are the Moravians doing? They're worshiping Jesus in the midst of a storm that could take down the boat. And there's this other English man who's shaken in his boots, doesn't know if he dies that day, if he's going to heaven or not. And he's struck by the peace in the storm that the Moravians have. And as we, we know later, it's John Wesley who is marked by their peace and by their trust in God. And his life is radically transformed. He later has his defining moment, heart strangely warmed, he spends three months with the Moravians to learn and receive impartation, receive from them. And then he ends up going, you know, pioneering the Methodist movement, the circuit riders, and you guys are fruit from what happened from this, you know, gathering where they're just hungry for God and they want unity. And then you see the ripple effects. We're still impacted hundreds of years later today because they wanted the fire and they stewarded the fire of God in a powerful way. This is an amazing just move of God. And I, I wonder today, Lord, give us that hunger, you know, being willing to sell yourself into slavery for the opportunity to spread the gospel. Does it mean that much to us? Jennifer, would you mind just praying over our audience today? Absolutely, yeah. And I've shared the Moravians and actually done a call for martyrdom um, people that would be willing to lay down their lives from it and seeing God move in a powerful way. So right now, God, we thank you that testimonies prophesy. We thank you for the example, the ground that's been laid before us with these Moravians, with unity, with stewarding the fire and intercession, with missions, God. And Lord, I just pray that you would bless every single person listening or watching right now that there would be a, a, a greater invitation to surrender more and lay down our lives afresh for the cause and call of loving you, Jesus, with everything inside of us. So we just thank you, God, for what you're doing. I pray that you'd mark each person with fresh fire, with a fresh surrender in Jesus' name. Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Jennifer, we're, we're going to take a break. Can you stay with us, though, after the break? I just There's some more we want to talk about and more we need to seek the Lord about. Absolutely. All right, we'll go to a quick break and we'll be right back with more from Jennifer Miskoff. God is calling you to do something significant in the earth for Him, regardless of your age, skill set, or perceived limitations. What's holding you back? When you give to support Cornerstone Television this month, let us bless you with Rick Renner's life-transforming book, Chosen by God. Every page will help you overcome your limited thinking and follow God's plan for your life. Rest assured, God has a plan, and He will thoroughly prepare you to fulfill it if you'll say yes with all your heart. This book will thrill you with the possibilities that await because you are chosen by God. Request your copy when you give by calling 888-665-4483 or donate online at ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for helping us spread the gospel through life-changing programming like Rick Renner, Hope Today, Hard Questions, and more. To keep your favorite programs coming and receive Chosen by God, donate today. Well, we're back talking about revival. And um, Jennifer, uh, we have Jennifer Miskov with us. Let me just ask you in the time we have remaining. So you have uh, assessments in the back of the book, things that uh, to uh, kind of alert ourselves to where we are. What is, the, what is the step? We've talked about seeking God, having a hunger for God. Um, what is the next step for someone who's viewing who says, yes, I, I, I see this. I, I sense that this is God prompting me, moving me. And we know that that's a, that's a precious thing that we want to shepherd that properly. What's their next step? 
Well, I, I talk about relational alignment. And so I think it's always healthy to welcome a baptism of fire mm-hmm. over every commitment, over every relationship, over everything we're doing so that we make sure we step into the new season, refined, purified, refined, purified, and aligned with the people God wants us to run with and link arms with for such a time as this, because the keys to our destiny are found in intimacy with Jesus and in deeper connections with the body of Christ. And so I think it's really important that we, you know, ask the Holy Spirit, you know, am I, am I running with the people you want me to run with in this season? What does it look like to go deeper with them? Because as we're more vulnerable with Jesus and those in our, in the body of Christ that we're knit, being knit together with, um, it just naturally beautiful things emerge. And so, uh, that that's kind of what that exercise will walk people through is just welcoming the Holy Spirit to refine and bring alignment along those relationships. So this is, this is going way beyond showing up for church on Sunday. Not that that's a bad thing, but it's uh, seeking, you say, like-minded people. How do, how do we recognize that? What are we looking for in, in people that, that are, are like-minded to what God is leading us into? Well, finding burning ones. I want to be a burning one. And so the best way to stay burning is to find other people that are on fire, surrendered, yielded, running after Jesus with everything inside of them. And once you find those people, it helps keep your fire um, lit and it helps keep you thriving. And so praying those people in, there's so many different avenues. We have stuff online now. We have, you know, so, so many different ways that you can find your tribe, you know, find your destiny when you find your people. It's just really important to find healthy people that are growing, that are actively pursuing the Holy Spirit, act, act, actively pursuing Jesus. Those are the people we want in our corner. Those are the people we want to be praying with and running with. And the Holy Spirit will highlight those. The Holy Spirit will bring divine appointments, but being intentional to make sure that we have the right people in, in our circle. So just a a, a final question for you here. We've talked about the gospel, about how this moves, uh, you know, again, we can have great meetings in the church, but there's something that seems to really happen that the spirit of God is wanting to go, wanting to go out. Could you just speak to that? And how do we know, uh, like a lot of us struggle, I think, with how to share the gospel or be the gospel, or should I go on a mission trip? Should I, you know, do what do something in my city what what is god leading us to to move this beyond a good meeting to a powerful time of uh, change in our communities i think it's just simply being a yielded vessel second kings 4 being a yielded vessel that the holy spirit can pour fresh oil into and out of and wherever we go being uh, sensitive to the holy spirit and surrendering and yielding. So if we're at a coffee shop and we feel this prompt to talk to the person behind the, you know, the barista about Jesus or to give them a high, t- a good tip and to say, God loves you. Or, you know, basically it's, it's being a yielded lover of Jesus, fully surrendered to the Holy Spirit and moving where he's moving. So if we can learn how to become sensitive to the Holy Spirit, be filled with the oil of the Holy Spirit, be filled with his love, and then go out into the world, do our normal jobs, do our normal activities, grocery shop, but actually be aware, God, what are you doing? Because he's always moving. And if we can tap into what he's doing and then just step out and courage, step over the chicken line, just take that one little step of faith and and give a positive word of encouragement, um, pray for somebody, you know, step out of our comfort zones and bring, we're called to be the light. No other generation has been entrusted to live post 2020, but us to bring light in a place of darkness in the midst of the politics, in the midst of everything. God's entrusted us, this generation to be light. The only way to be light is to get filled up the Holy Spirit filled up with Jesus in your secret quiet time and then go out into the world and just be yourself loudly, like shine. Don't be afraid to shine and release and demonstrate the love and power of Jesus wherever you go. I I have a quick question I want to ask. I believe that there is a viewer out there that's watching and you're talking about having, you know, this secret time with the Lord. Could you just simply describe what that secret time looks like? Yeah, 
you know, I think it's important that we spend time da daily in the word of God because that, that's our food, right? That's our source. Um, but also spend time, even a minute a day saying, Holy Spirit, come and just wait on the Holy Spirit. That's Psalm 46 it says, be still and know that I am Lord. So take time to actually be still and listen. A lot of us pray. We're really good at interceding and praying and asking God for things. But what does it look like to pause? Maybe a verse is highlighted. You meditate on that, but actually listen and write, maybe journal, write down what he says. But the more time you can spend with the Lord, I like mornings. Um, I like being in nature, whatever it looks like for you. Uh, the more that we can do that, the more we'll have to overflow when we step out in the world. So I think it's just spending time with Jesus, letting him take you on a journey. A lot of times it has to do with reading the Bible, praying, but listening is also a beautiful thing I think we need to embrace as believers as well. Wow, it's so good. The book is called Sustain the Flame, Secrets to Living Saturated in God's <laughs> Presence and Holy Fire. I cannot more highly recommend a book than this. And Jennifer, thank you so much for being with us today. Dr. Jennifer Miskov, thank you for writing the book. Thank you for all you do for the kingdom. Oh, it's a joy, my biggest pleasure. Great, Amanda, it's, it, this is, listen everybody, this is not like a TV show, this is a call. It's a call to say, I am going to, to live for Jesus right. as a called out one, as someone who's full of the, the power of God, who just knows who I am in Christ, and that let that spill over to those around you. That's right. I believe today's hope is that you have been called for such a time as this, my friend. God has given you gifts by the power of the Holy Spirit, and that gift within you is to be shared. So today, I just believe that the Lord is moving in your life and stirring your heart to go to be that willing vessel wherever you go, that vessel of glory that the Holy Spirit could flow through. He loves you so much and it's why you follow him and he desires to take you to just another realm with him to be a true follower and a disciple of Jesus and sharing the love of God. Just know that he sure loves you today. On tomorrow's Hope Today, discover ways to confront life's trials with unshakable faith and joy. Christian comedian Shonda Pierce shares her story that was once filled with heartbreak and sorrow as she now inspires others to turn to God and trust His faithfulness. Don't miss tomorrow's Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.